So is it true? Did Disney World really ruin their most iconic hotel? Or did they actually make it better? We're going to find out together here on DFE Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. On our epic quest to find out what Disney Hotel is the resort for you, we've stumbled across a lot of different opinions. But Disney's contemporary resort might just have created the biggest divide of them all. On one side of the equation, you've got guests who love the hotel's transportation methods, killer views, top tier restaurants, and incredible, wink wink, room designs. And on the other side, you've got guests who believe they're paying higher prices for a cheapened experience. And now it's time to find out where you're gonna stand on this debate, no pressure or anything. We've been taking a detailed look into all the hotels on Disney World property, exposing the good, the bad, and the expensive, so you can figure out which one's gonna be best for you. Check out our YouTube playlist so far of all the resorts we've already covered, and stay tuned as we continue to review the rest. Before we get started, let's clarify an important term here real quick. The contemporary is labeled as a deluxe resort, which in Disney speak means you're investing in the cream of the crop. Staying in a deluxe resort means you'll have access to multiple transportation options, multiple restaurants, larger rooms, and lots of amenities. But with all those attractive perks comes a price tag that could make you go, wow, yeah, thanks. I think I'd rather be able to afford my house after I get back from vacation. In addition to the contemporary, you've also got Bay Lake Tower, a Disney vacation club deluxe villa resort which we'll also be talking about today and i know i'm throwing out a lot of terms that might mean nothing to you right now so let's fix that and get to the good stuff Disney's Contemporary Resort is a longtime fan favorite, but how long are we talking here? Well, the Contemporary was one of Disney World's two opening day hotels, meaning it's been around since October of 1971. At 50 years old, the Contemporary has a lot of history surrounding it. One of its most significant moments happened in 1973 when President Richard Nixon gave his infamous I am not a crook speech amidst the Watergate scandal. The more you know. So how do I best go about describing this hotel? I guess seeing it's contemporary Temporary looking is probably a good start, though now that I've said it out loud, I'm realizing it might not be really helpful, so we're going to dig a little bit deeper. The Contemporary is the A-framed resort situated pretty close to Magic Kingdom, and by close, I mean walking distance close. If you compare it to, say, the other deluxe hotels within walking distance of the Magic Kingdom, Disney's Polynesian Village Resort and Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, you might feel like there's a bit of a hodgepodge going on with the Contemporary's theming. Because, you know, Polynesian's got the tropical vibes, Grand Floridian has that classic Victorian chic, and the contemporary is in an identity crisis. You got the calm and romantic aspects of the hotel, like the classy California grill and the picturesque views of the sparkling Bay Lake and Seven Seas Lagoon. But you also got the rambunctious aspects that involve rowdy character dining over at Chef Mickey's and the vibrant new Disney-fied room themes for each of the guest rooms. More on that in a bit. So on the one hand, you might argue that this hotel has something for everyone, but on the other hand, you might feel like this originally classy resort is missing a centralized theme, like all the other hotels on property seem to have nailed down. But if there's one thing you can for sure say about the contemporary, there's always something interesting to look at. The big eye catcher inside the hotel is the monorail track, which glides right through the main concourse on its way to the Magic Kingdom. That's right. This is the hotel that the monorail goes right through, which is very cool. They did not do that at the Disneyland Hotel in Disneyland. I don't know why, but they didn't. And what's wild is you'd think, oh, there's a train literally going through the hotel. It's going to be loud. No, the monorail is extremely quiet and smooth. So if you're worried about a ginormous shuttle rattling you awake in the wee hours of the morning, you don't need to be. Another big attention grabber extending through the Grand Canyon concourse or the fourth floor of the resort are the murals, which were designed by Mary Blair, the lead artist behind a lot of your favorite Disney experiences, like It's a Small World. If that's not your favorite? You're kidding. Why wouldn't it be? Anyway, her style bleeds through these expansive murals, meaning you can expect to see lots of bright colors and attention-grabbing patterns. That quintessential geometric Mary Blair vibe. Now, the animals and nature elements in these particular pieces are influenced by Southwest Native Americans. In fact, Blair added a five-legged goat in the mural, not as a blaring mistake, get it? 
but as a tribute to the Native American belief that nothing made by man can ever be perfect. Overall, the contemporary has a modern and upscale vibe, but still manages to hold on to its foundational stylistic elements, kind of like that mid-century modern vision of tomorrow, right? This was actually situated next to Tomorrowland in the Magic Kingdom, because Walt was originally going to have you be able to get into that particular land from the contemporary, get it? So why are guests scrambling to stay here? Let's expand on the big benefit here that I've already mentioned briefly. Disney's Contemporary Resort will put you within very close walking distance to the Magic Kingdom. Not to mention, even on the days when you're not planning on going to the most magical place on Earth, you'll still be able to enjoy the views of Bay Lake and Seven Seas Lagoon that sit on either side of the hotel. And since the monorail loop glides directly through the Contemporary, guests not only have a straight, direct line to Magic Kingdom, they also have a very easy access to the other monorail resorts, and you're just one monorail transfer away from the Epcot monorail line, thanks to the transportation and ticket center stop along the way. Okay, place your bets. How much do you think a room at one of Disney's OG hotels is going to cost you to stay at? Got your bets in? Great. Let's see how close your predictions were. For the record, if you thought Disney's Contemporary Resort was going to be by far and away the most expensive stay in Disney World, then you've already lost the bet. You're definitely going to find pricier rooms over at the neighboring Grand Floridian Resort. But things vary so much between these two, they kind of battle it out once in a while. So let's dissect all the different rooms you can stay in at the Contemporary, because you got quite the selection to choose from over there. We're going to start at that main A-frame tower of the Contemporary, since that's where all the action is, like the monorail, Chef Mickey's, the shops, the restaurants, you get it. A standard room in this area sleeps up to five people, featuring either a king bed or two queen beds and a day bed. Here you're going to either have a view across the lake or to Magic Kingdom itself. Now you might prefer the theme park view if you want to see fireworks go off over Cinderella Castle every single night of your stay. Rooms in the main tower range between $750 and $950 per night, depending on the time of year you visit. You hear that? That's the sound of your bank account crying. Now south of the main tower is the garden wing. Though this area is a little less hustle and bustle than the main tower area, you will not be able to garden here. Sorry for the confusion. Depending where you're situated, you might get a garden view outside your window or a standard view of the parking lot. Eh, there are worse places, I guess. The cheapest, and I say that loosely, of the garden wing rooms are going to be the king rooms, which feature a single king bed plus a day bed, so that's going to sleep up to three people altogether. The standard rooms with two queen beds plus a day bed are going to sleep up to five guests and are also in the lower price tier of this resort. But if you want to have a little more elbow room in the mornings, you can choose a deluxe room that'll sleep up to four people and include a king bed, a queen sleeper sofa, and a living room area. And these garden wing rooms will typically cost between $550 and $700 per night, with the deluxe rooms being on the higher end of that spectrum. Now, quick note, the garden wing is going to be separated from the tower by a covered walkway. So you're gonna have to actually leave your hotel building to get over into the main tower to the shopping, the fitness center, the restaurants, etc., and the front desk. So that's why these rooms are a little bit less expensive because you're basically a teeny tiny walk away from the amenities. Now, if you're looking for a truly fancy pants experience, you can opt for the one bedroom suite, which sleeps up to five, or the one bedroom hospitality suite, which sleeps up to seven. Both of these are great for larger groups who'd like a living room, kitchen, dining room, separate bedroom, and a deck or patio to chill out on at the end of a Magic Kingdom day. But here's the kicker. Those rooms will typically run you around 1,500 per night, though they could be steeper during the holiday season. Now, onto the club club level room. So if you and your group are looking to stay up in the club, you're going to have bonus amenities thrown your way, such as full access to the club level lounge that serves complimentary drinks and snacks from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. The club level lounge is a peaceful escape where you can have a quick bite and straight up vibe while you check out impressive views of the Magic Kingdom. If you select the atrium club level, you'll have the choice of a standard room or a theme park view room. Fireworks or no fireworks? That is the question. Whichever one you choose, either room can sleep up to five adults. Prices for these rooms are going to range between $950 and $1,200 per night. And if you want an even more bougie experience, you can get a one or two bedroom suite with views of either Bay Lake or the Magic Kingdom. One bedroom suites will sleep up to six adults and cost around $1,800 to $2,100 per night. Two bedroom suites can sleep up to eight people or 10 people and cost around $2,800 per night. If you truly have 10 people staying here, you better hope all 10 of those folks are chipping in. Even the kids need to be turning out their pockets for a suite like this. 
Now, if you're still yawning at those prices, you can always stay in the club level presidential suite for $3,500 per night. You and seven other guests will be able to enjoy a 2,000 square foot suite complete with a massive balcony, spacious bathroom, large bedrooms, a full on kitchen. Basically, you could move right on in and live comfortably the rest of your life. Not financially comfortably, but like you'd be able to kick your feet up and not kick your partner in the process. Moving right along from the contemporary building and over to Bay Lake Tower, otherwise known as the Disney Vacation Club portion of the resort. But remember, don't just skip over this portion because you're not a DVC member. You can still book a room here as long as there's availability. Bay Lake Tower is connected to the mainframe of the Contemporary via a walking bridge, which honestly, I like to take my time strolling across because the lake views from up there are gorgeous. The DVC building houses deluxe studios as well as one, two, and three bedroom villas. Each room is going to give DVC members and non-members a nice, cozy, yet spacious feel that'll make you feel right at home. These range in price from $750 to $4,200 per night. And while the deluxe studios just have a kitchenette, the one, two, three bedroom villas, the grand villa, they all have full kitchens and washer dryers as well. Okay, you got all of that? Seems you've certainly got plenty of choices when it comes to places to stay at Disney's Contemporary Resort. So whatever your price prediction was at the beginning of this section, let's just say if you got in between that $500 to $4,000 range, then you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Now, enough of the numbers. It is time to talk about the elephant in the literal room. Are you team Incredibles or team what on earth has Disney done to these rooms? Last year, all nine floors of the guest rooms in the main tower were completely rethemed around Pixar's The Incredibles, featuring our favorite superhero family of five, alongside other beloved characters like Edna Mode and Frozone. The rooms are vibrant with pops of reds and oranges against muted black, white, and gray tones. And you're gonna find fun little nods to the supers in the furniture, the pillows, the dresser drawers, even the closet area. Okay, we see the family's super suits, but where is Frozone's? Where is his super suit? Sorry. Now the re-theming did rejuvenate these rooms, but it also caused confusion. Why the Incredibles? Don't get me wrong, I like the Incredibles, great film, Jack-Jack's the coolest, but the new theming feels random here. When Disney's Polynesian Village Resort remodeled their room after the animated film Moana, that made sense. Also, they still kept the rooms luxurious and rich, but I just sort of feel like the rooms at the Contemporary now feel sparse and cheap. I don't know. I guess you can tell what side of this uh, debate I'm on. But some of our team really, really love these new Incredibles rooms. And if you have a kid who loves the Incredibles, then this is going to be a great place for them to stay. But this is feeling a little less deluxe to me than I want to feel in a room I just paid $500 to stay in. Now, if some of the rooms haven't been impacted by the Incredibles theming, there are a few of them that haven't been revamped yet. You'll see a more subtle tone. There's pops of yellow and black and white accent patterns mixed throughout. It's sort of a dark wood, mid-century modern look in there. So if you're not too thrilled with bold patterns and color schemes going on in the new Incredibles rooms, then maybe for a little while longer, they'll have the old theming in some of those garden wing rooms and maybe a few of those suites but I think they are gonna eventually revamp most of the rooms in the hotel. Compared to other hotels across Disney World property, the Contemporary is very compact as well. Resorts like Disney's Coronado Springs and Caribbean Beach, those are spread out all over the place between dozens of buildings, meaning the location of your room could determine just how far you're forced to trek each day to reach certain hotel amenities. The Contemporary is pretty centralized, so your room's never gonna be too terribly far away from the lobby, dining, shopping, or the pool. Okay, ready to hit up the parks now? Let's hit up the parks now. It'd be great to have Dash's super speed and just race over to wherever we wanted around Disney World property, but super speed for humans hasn't exactly been revealed yet in any of us, so we're gonna have to rely on other means of transportation, and the Contemporary Resort is hooking you up. Now, yes, you could drive if you brought a car, but this is about Disney transportation, so just stick with us. How are you gonna get around Disney World property when you're staying at the Contemporary? Well, to get to the Magic Kingdom, you can take a quick 10-minute walk or hop on the monorail Rail. Easy. However, keep in mind that the monorail to the Magic Kingdom may not be as quick as it seems. The park is the last of the three additional stops on this route, so it might take a little extra time to make the full loop before arriving at the front gates. And remember, when you get on the monorail at the end of the night in Magic Kingdom to go back to the Contemporary, it's your first stop. For all the other Magic Kingdom area resorts, Fort Wilderness, Grand Floridian, Polynesian Village, and Wilderness Lodge, you've also got the additional water taxi option that'll get you over to Magic Kingdom, but Disney's Contemporary Resort doesn't have this one currently available. Now to get to Epcot, you'll take the monorail to the Transportation and Tickets Center, and you'll transfer to the Epcot monorail line, also easy. 
For Disney's Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, and Springs, you're going to be living the bus life. These bus rides take about 15 minutes or so, not including how long you'll have to wait at the bus stop before your shuttle arrives. But in general, this resort is most convenient for guests who plan on spending a good chunk of time at Magic Kingdom. It's easy to ride to and easy to walk to, and considering what a pain it can be to navigate Disney's transportation service, at the start and end of each Magic Kingdom day, the convenience might make the asking price worth it. Now it's time to talk about my favorite part of Disney's Contemporary Resort, the food. Whether you plan on actually staying at Disney's Contemporary Resort or not, keep listening, because you can make reservations for some of the best restaurants on Disney World property here. Hotel guest or not. We're going to start with Steakhouse 71. In honor of Disney World's 50th anniversary, the Contemporary opened up a new table service restaurant called Steakhouse 71, named after the year Disney World and the Contemporary itself first opened. This is where the wave of American flavors used to be, which at first made me all sad. And then I tried the food at Steakhouse 71, and I was happy again. Steakhouse 71 serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner in a very sleek setting. Luckily, it doesn't look like a 1970s car dealership anymore, which is what the wave looked like. So yay, and they've incorporated elements from Disney history into the decor. Now, obviously, I'm going to tell you to try the steak here, which you'll only be able to try around dinner time, but there are plenty of great items on the menu all day long. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you probably already know my favorites, like the stack burger and the bacon and eggs appetizer, but there are other noteworthy items too, like the gourmet grilled cheese, French onion soup. You know I love that tequila sunrise for two, in case you and your honey need fun and fruity drink to share, or you know you want to drink it by yourself. Not saying I have a lot of experience with that or anything. And then heading right out to Steakhouse 71 Lounge. If you can't get a last minute reservation for Steakhouse 71, that is okay because Steakhouse 71 Lounge might not give you the full menu, but you can order from a full menu of drinks and a selection of lounge bites that might fill you up just as well as the restaurant itself. Personal favorites here, the loaded macaroni and cheese, definitely. And again, that stack burger, which is available all day here, even though you won't see it on the dinner menu in the restaurant itself. Now, you'll have to head to the tippy top of the Contemporary to find California Grill, which is the relaxed and upscale signature fancy restaurant. California Grill is located on the 15th floor of this hotel and has sprawling views of Magic Kingdom and Seven Seas Lagoon. Thanks to this unique vantage point, dinner guests are going to be able to view the Magic Kingdom fireworks from the restaurant's private balcony. Right now, California Grill is offering a prefix 50th anniversary celebration menu, which is pretty pricey, like $89 per person and pricey at minimum. But along with this price, you'll receive a three course fine dining experience along with some pretty sick views. Now, one of the most popular all you care to enjoy restaurants in Disney World can be found on the Grand Canyon concourse of the Contemporary, and that's Chef Mickey's. This character meal features Mickey and friends all dressed up in aprons and white toques because yes, yes, they can stand the heat of a kitchen. Whether you decide to dine here for breakfast or dinner, you'll be dropped in the middle of a very fun, family-friendly, napkin-twirling experience that's very, very loud and rambunctious and kind of stressful. Reservations here are hard to score, so make sure you book those advanced dining reservations 60 days before your trip to help improve your chances of getting a table at this very popular restaurant, which I would recommend you go to a different restaurant instead. But I understand if you want to go here, if you're staying at the Contemporary. We've got lots of videos on this. We'll talk about it later. All right, next we're going to Contempo Cafe. There's not just table service dining at the Contemporary. You can also order something a little quicker and cheaper at Contempo Cafe. This is one of my favorite quick service restaurants in the hotels in Disney World. You're going to find classic American options, burgers, flatbreads. They've always got my chicken tenders coming in clutch. And it's also known to serve up a variety of specialty cupcakes, pastries, other seasonal desserts in the bakery case. Though they did mess with one of my favorite Disney World desserts, the peanut butter pie. The 50th anniversary version is not as good as its former self, so I hope that goes back to normal soon. If anybody out there is listening from the contemporary pastry chef team. Okay, Contemporary Grounds is next. This is your home base for all things coffee and caffeine infused, though you can also order a few non-caffeinated beverages here too. This small cafe serves up a mix of Joffrey's coffee creations alongside an assortment of pastries and snacks. You are going to find this right before the doorway to the convention center for the Contemporary Resort because that is where the people need it most. And let's chill out over at Outer Rim. This is a lounge surrounded by all the action of Chef Mickey's and Contempo Cafe. I know that doesn't sound chill, but the window views and extensive list of cocktails, beers, and wines mellows out some of those hollers coming from Chef Mickey's dinner rush. 
Now, Lookout DVC members, you'll be able to check out a fresh new lounge experience at this hotel with artwork and cocktails that are all wickedly cool. Top of the World Lounge is located at the top of Bay Lake Tower and has recently been revamped to take on a more dastardly Disney villains theme. The lounge is open from 6 p.m. to midnight every evening, but only Disney Vacation Club members with access to membership extras will be allowed to enter this all-exclusive lounge. Seats are available on a first-come, first-served basis, so DVC members don't need to worry about making any advantages reservations. And you've got two pool bars to choose from here. The first is the sand bar, which is for the contemporary's main pool. It's a pretty standard procedure here. You've got your cocktails, you've got your small bites, it'll get you fed and liquored up. The second is Cove Bar. This is the poolside bar for those staying at Bay Lake Tower. Just like the sand bar, you can grab snacky foods here or some sort of frozen concoction that helps you hang on. Now note that the Cove Bar really is only accessible by those staying at Bay Lake Tower. So you're gonna wanna bring your room key when you're gonna go there. Now just like Contemporary's plethora of room options, there are lots of restaurants to choose from here. I know I only talked about each of them briefly because I didn't wanna keep you here for an extra hour or so, you're welcome. So if you wanna learn more about these contemporary temporary restaurants and their many, many offerings. I've got entire sections dedicated to them in the 2022 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining, which you can download from the dfbstore.com. Don't forget to type in code YouTube for extra savings on your overall purchase. But what else can you do besides eat around here? Well, let's play a fun game. I'm going to list all the different activities you can do around Disney's Contemporary Resort, and you have to guess which one's my favorite. Ready? Let's begin. First, you've got the standard outdoor activities like basketball, tennis, jogging, trails and campfires. If you're about to say my favorite activity is jogging, then that is not true. And there are also opportunities for lakeside yoga, fishing, and renting a motorized boat. That's right, you can head over to the Boat Nook Marina, rent a pontoon boat, and take yourself and your nine best friends on a cruise around Bay Lake or Seven Seas Lagoon. When it's time to take things poolside, there's the main feature pool with a 17-foot high water slide. But if the main pool is getting a little too rowdy for your liking, you can head to the quieter leisure pool nearby. Are these the most exciting pools in Disney World? No, far from it. Do you see a sea serpent here? Absolutely not. But you can rent a poolside cabana by the hour or for the rest of the day. Those come with a TV, phone, mini fridge, just a little extra luxury for you to consider if you're interested. Bay Lake Tower also has its own pool for guests only. If you like to keep up with your workout schedule while on vacation, here's the Olympiad Fitness Center. Mr. Incredible will be so proud of you. If for some reason you can't completely escape work while on your vacation, I know it happens, the Contemporary also has a convention center with various meeting facilities you can use for quiet, peace, and Wi-Fi, the true American dream right there. For all your souvenir needs, there are two gift shops in the Contemporary's Grand Canyon Concourse, Bayview Gifts and Fantasia Gifts. And just around the corner from those shops is where you're gonna find the Game Station Arcade, which could be a great rainy day activity for the kids if you're trying to stay dry. Think you know my favorite activity yet? Hold on just a sec, I've got a few more entries for you to mull over. Fireworks are a huge part of Disney World entertainment, but when you just don't feel like standing in a massive crowd of people, you can book your own special VIP fireworks cruise that departs from the Contemporary Marina. Don't worry about the driving, a captain will take care of that, and don't worry about bringing aboard any snacks or drinks, because they're going to be pre-stocked on board. All you have to worry about is kicking back and enjoying enchantment. Oh. And you also have to worry about footing the bill, which is $400 per sailing, but the boat does seat up to 10 guests, so if you and your nine closest buddies can split the bill, it might be worth it. And don't forget about the electrical water pageant. You can also watch a cute little light-up parade make its way across Seven Seas Lagoon each night. But here's a tip for you parents out there. If you have a little kid who needs to go to sleep early and you're staying at the Contemporary Resort, note that A, there's a bunch of fireworks going off every night real close to your room, and B, that electrical water pageant gets a lot louder when you have a baby sleeping in your room. <laughs> I know this from experience. I know I've talked about it on the channel before, but it is a nightmare when you've got a kid, you finally got to sleep and that thing goes by the room and is very loud. All right, ready to guess my favorite activity here? Well, I'm gonna surprise you. I love all of these things, but I always make time on a Disney vacation for a little poolside relaxation. Even if I'm there to work, I kind of build in an extra hour just to go hang out by the pool and relax and just soak up the vibe of being on vacation. I grew up in Western New York state where it snowed all the time and there were no pools to be had. So anytime I can go to a pool, I always feel really, really, really grateful. So I always make use of it. 
But wait, there is more and it's important stuff. What if I told you you could get more time in the parks by staying at a Disney owned hotel? Would that sway your decision one way or another? Okay, let's talk amenities. Guests staying at any Disney World owned hotel can enter the theme parks 30 minutes early each day thanks to the early theme park entry benefit. However, those staying at a deluxe resort or a deluxe villa get even more time on top of that since if you're at the most expensive hotels, you'll have access to extended evening hours. This option allows deluxe resort and deluxe villa guests to stick around select parks on select evenings for an hour or more after they've closed to the rest of the public, which means more ride time and much shorter lines. So we've made it to the nitty gritty of this video. Is it worth it? I know I just threw a lot of information at you to digest in a short amount of time, but let's break it down and decide if all these different factors make a stay at Disney's Contemporary Resort worth it for you. So you're gonna throw your super suit in your suitcase if you wanna be within walking distance of Magic Kingdom. Wake up, get dressed, walk to Magic Kingdom, have the best day ever, walk back to your room, sleep. Sound like a good plan to you? Then the contemporary might be your best bet, especially if you want to avoid fighting the end of the night crowds for a spot on the bus or the monorail, which can be just as bad. Now, you can also walk to Magic Kingdom from the Grand Floridian. Now you can walk to the Magic Kingdom from the Polynesian Village Resort now as well. Those are slightly longer walks, however. Now, you might want to stay here if you want to stay at a monorail resort. This makes it really easy to get to the other hotels on the monorail, to get to Magic Kingdom, to get to Epcot. And thanks to the Contemporary's monorail running right through its A-frame building, you've got easy access to two of the four Disney World parks right there. Now, maybe you want to stay here if you want a big room, like a really big room. Rooms at the Contemporary are very spacious. They can also be tailored to your group size, preferred amenities, and location preferences. So if you like having a lot of choices, the Contemporary can give that to you, but you're going to pay for those choices, let's not forget. And maybe you also want unique fireworks views. Forget about just watching Disney Enchantment inside Magic Kingdom. You have the potential of watching fireworks in your pajamas from the balcony of your room. You can also watch them from the private viewing area at California Grill, not in your pajamas, preferably, and the specialty VIP fireworks crews, and honestly, just stepping outside the hotel in general. Fireworks everywhere. But I want to make a quick note here. You can book the VIP fireworks cruise even if you're not staying at the Contemporary. You can book it even if you're not staying at a Disney hotel. They don't care. They'll let you give them that money. Now, when would you not want to stay there? Well, you're going to be spending more time at a different theme park, maybe. If you plan on spending a lot more time in Hollywood Studios or Animal Kingdom on this trip, then spending a lot of money to stay at the Contemporary doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Instead, you'd be better off staying at one of the Disney Skyliner hotels for Hollywood Studios or staying at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge for, well, I guess you'd be closer to Animal Kingdom. You also might not want to stay here if you don't want to go broke funneling money into a week-long stay. When you hear me say sentences like a two-bedroom costs $1,500, you'd probably think that I'm talking about a two-bedroom apartment going for $1,500 a month rather than a two-bedroom hotel room going for $1,500 a night. Is it pricey? Absolutely. Are you getting a lot in exchange for that price? Yeah, but is it $1,500 worth? It's up to you to decide if those things are important enough for you to shell out that kind of dough. With that being said, if you're set on staying at a hotel near Magic Kingdom, you'll pay a little bit less for the Contemporary than you would at, say, Grand Floridian, most likely. Now, you might not want to stay here if you're kind of thrown off by the hodgepodge personality of this resort. There's a lot going on here. A lot of people don't want to stay at the Contemporary because they don't like the vibe of the Contemporary. It's hard to pin down, so if you'd rather stay at a hotel that's more in touch with its overall theming, it's got maybe a historical feel to it, like Disney's Port Orleans resorts, or even the potentially much cheaper and ever colorful Disney's Art of Animation, then those may be better options for you. However, there is something to be said about having a little something for everyone at the Contemporary. You've got the family-friendly atmosphere and the more romantic atmosphere all wrapped up into one deluxe resort. Although I don't feel like staying in these Incredibles rooms is very romantic, I'm just saying. Now you also might not want to stay here if you only want to stay here for the food options. If the only reason you want to stay at Contemporary is for access to all the different restaurants, you don't have to spend hundreds of extra dollars to make that happen. You can make a reservation for any of the table service restaurants here without having to be a guest of the Contemporary. So eat here and invest in a different hotel room that you'll love even more. Win-win. 
All right, now that I've said everything I needed to say, this is your opportunity to let all the information settle and let your decision-making process begin. Remember, there aren't any wrong Disney World choices and there are wrong Disney World choices for you. So if you're overwhelmed, here's the TLDR for this video. Super expensive, close to Cindy's, lots of Disney history, Mickey wearing a chef's hat, fireworks, the end. Now, as I said, we are gonna create a video like this for every single Disney World hotel so we can help you work through which one is gonna be best for you and your family. So take this time to go check out some of our other hotel reviews and start narrowing down your favorite. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.